All right, everyone, welcome back to the Coast to Coast podcast. I'm joined every Thursday night with my main man, Tori. We're here to go over the NHL. We're about, a, what is it, a week away now, a week and a half from season concluding. For 10 days, yep. Getting the playoffs up and going at it. A lot of action, some, some spots up for grabs, some more races that are kind of decide we know who will probably play who. Uh, I know you want to touch on the Leafs a little bit with a big Leafs corner this this week. It looks big in the topic chart, but really it's just to make sure that I uh, I, I could reference some stuff if I wanted to talk about it. Um, so leading off with the Leafs, um, no one's really talking about this where I'm at, which is obviously in headquarters of Leafland for a lot of time. But uh, Kirill Semyonov, uh, he's another guy that they've signed out of the KHL, much like Mikheyev and Oshiganov and Zaitsev and Soshnikov and Barabanov and Lettinen and all these guys and I think we've talked about it on prior podcasts just about, um, I mean, the Leafs bring these guys in, and if they can't use them, they make sure that they can find a place to play. Yeah. Uh, so they're taking care, care of them, even if it's not on their own roster. Um, so, I mean, all these guys who want to come and give it a shot, they know they're not going to go to a team X, um, sit on the like sit on the pine, not play for 20 games, and then be like, oh, yeah, he never produced. Well, yeah, no wonder. Like, give him a chance kind of thing. Yeah. Um, not a lot to expect out of him. He's 21 years old, um, six foot one, 185 pounds, left-handed forward, um, kind of like a backup plan if Galchenyuk or Mikheyev uh, leave or are traded. Um, he's kind of a two-way. They call him an annoying player uh, just because he's very active with a stick. He's got a long stick. Is he playing? He's kind of hack- not hacks in- like right now. Is it still in the KHL? Or like or uh, season just ended. It's in the KHL. Right? Season ended. Yeah. Season ended. So it's for next so year. He can't. He can't right play now. this year. Yeah, he'll play. It. Okay. Yeah, he's just off training, probably at the Leafs facilities, if I had to guess, or making his way there once COVID restrictions are kind of lifted or whatever works in yeah. that capacity for that. Um, but he cannot play for the Marlies or the Leafs this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's only for a one-year deal for next year. Okay. Um, he's he's not very skilled in terms of goal production, um, but he's just kind of got a high motor. He's very intelligent on the defensive side. Uh, and he's a centerman, uh, again, with a long reach, good at face-offs. Uh, so he's kind of like a bottom six type of guy. Uh, so for free, entry-level contract, yeah, there's nothing really wrong with that. a couple years down the road where they're going to need some players like that. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, as soon as next year, potentially, right? If not mid-season kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, I just I like to see this. I, again, I know I've talked about it, just about all these guys that they've signed. Um, but realistically, it's, it's kind of what? AHL plus level talent. Like, they're better than the AHL, the minor level, but they may not be good enough for the NHL level. Uh, I was going to ask you, for, for your expectation, in terms of rounds of pick, like picks, if you if you could have a certain round of pick and you knew they were AHL level plus players, what round would that be? Like, fourth like for round, example, a like third, they're guaranteed yeah. that? To be that? That's what I'm saying. Like, would you, be ha- would you be happy if your fourth rounder played – you know, a few games in the NHL, and that was better than the AHL? I think so, yeah. Probably third, fourth rounder, probably somewhere in there. That's what I was thinking. So, I mean, you got to think these guys, they're basically, yes, they traded yeah, thirds and fourths for guys know, to come in, but they're signing about these it a guys. Lot so. where the Leafs are kind of using their buying power, their scouting power, their asset management mm. to their advantage. And that's how mm. they're going to manage to be relevant for hopefully a long time. And you got to think that there's there's what a hundred no names to every one Panarin that comes through, but there's also a lot of just reliable checking type guys that are just a name for a couple of years. Um, but if you keep signing these guys for every thirty guys that you sign, you're going to hit on one guy that's much better than you expected that could turn into a like yeah. not a core piece but a secondary piece type guy, right? So eventually they're going to hit on something, probably. And even if again if they don't use it, they turn around it for a pick. You it's pick manufacturing, right? Asset manufacturing, which the best teams need to do so I, li- I like to see my team doing it <laughs> um another thing too is uh the leafs traded igor korshkov uh, at the trade deadline for alex galchenyuk along with uh, david warsawski who was an ahl kind of career veteran at that level um just I, ha- I had some people ask me just like what i thought about him i know i had talked about a lot of a lot about him because i'm a prospect guy uh former second rounder of the leafs um but it just tells me that the leafs probably knew um, that he wasn't going to sign here because he just resigned in the KHL. Uh, so it seems like he doesn't really have the brightest desire to play in the NHL uh, if he's not going to be at that high level. So maybe kind of, you know, the Leafs knew and they took a chance on a guy like Galchenyuk for an asset that may have never come over yeah. to North America. So 
Okay, that makes sense. Interesting move there. At the time, I thought it was it sucked because um, he was a former second rounder and he was um, Mark Hunter's pick, who I don't think did a very good draft at all outside the first round uh, for the two and a half years he was here. Um, but hey, if this actually turns into Galchenyuk uh, sticking around, which, you know, after going to so many teams, he kind of found a home, why leave, right? Even if it's for one or two years on the cheap, um, like, you know, rebuild the value for yourself and kind of go from there. So it's a win-win all around. Uh, and the last thing for the Leafs is Freddie Anderson uh, played today for the Marlies uh, this afternoon. Uh, he played period and a half. He let in two goals. He looked okay. Um, <clears throat> just for Leaf fans, I'm excited because who cares who's actually in the pipes? You're going to probably need both goalies if you go on a long run. Yeah, um, but sure. if we have both options, it makes me feel much, much better. So uh, somebody put it this way today. I forget who it was, but I really liked it. They said uh, Jack Campbell is probably going to start the playoffs for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But if the Toronto Maple Leafs hoist the Stanley Cup, it will probably be Freddie Anderson who is playing for them. AKA you'll need both. But if you go that far, Freddie's the guy that will get you that far. So we'll see. I'm excited. Can't wait. Yeah. It's going to be pumped up. Yeah. I can't wait for the playoffs. Like you said, about 10 days. This is kind of the weird stage for me where like, yeah, it's been games kind of like a Passover a save stage. Cause I always get so excited in April with baseball uh, because out of the gate everyone's the same so I kind of get swallowed up and it's good timing because at least it wasn't NHL playoffs in April this time it was kind of yeah. a lull period and I think it's working out in their favor because as baseball starts to go into a lull then hockey's going to be right there to scoop up some audience exactly. hopefully if they don't blow and then at the end of hockey it'll here. be play- baseball playoffs shortly after that so it'll just be one thing after and one thing after another which then there's also the entry draft and expansion uh, which leads us to our next point. Uh, yeah. Seattle Kraken are officially a member. They are the, officially the 32nd franchise of the NHL. Hey. <laughs> they finally they made it. They we finally made, it made their last payment. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's funny because it took them about a month longer than the same time along that Vegas did it. Uh, so that just basically gave it basically screwed them a month out of signing any you know European free agents, overage free agents, NCAA guys, undrafted guys, you know guys that weren't signed but were drafted and rights expired, all that, that kind of situation. So um, they probably didn't care. So they probably like, what's another month? Yeah, don't, I don't think, think it's it... going to make a big impact. But Yeah, let the games begin. Yeah. I'm excited. Uh, hopefully the divisions are back. Uh, that's all. I hope we don't have to cross yeah. that bridge. That's all I hope. I'm excited for the Kraken. I, 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 the name's really growing on me. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Uh, but yeah, a couple other things to mention here. Marc Andre Fleury uh, becomes a third all-time goalie in wins. Yeah, and you had a little uh, trivia, trivia waiting for me, and I think I know at yeah. least one. But I feel like the second guy okay. is old, and I won't know who. He, like I'll know his name when I hear it, but I won't guess him. the qu- The question would be if Mar- Marc Andre Fleury is third in all-time wins, who is number one and who is number two? I think Brodeur is number one. Correct. Yeah. So, but number two, I don't know. And if I, I feel like it's an older ge- not, name that I'm not going to guess. No, it's not. Then it's pa- I would go Patrick Waugh. I don't know. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Broder and Waugh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's pretty good company for him. And I think people, uh, especially if he gets another cup, um, I think I think people need to give him a little bit more respect. I, I think it's a weird situation with him because of him being one of the only goalies to ever go first overall that wasn't a complete dud. I think people are just kind of not sure. It's like they how to value this. him. So you need it. You, we need something more. Like they're expecting more, yeah, like, but it's already great. You needed like four Vesnas, three <laughs> cups to be like you know worth being a first overall pick almost. So I feel like he's always devalued because he's like, yeah, you're good, but like you're supposed to be better. You're supposed to be good. Weird land. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that was uh, that. nice to yeah. kind of bring up. Um, but the other one was uh, Anzi Kopitar. Uh, he hit a thousand points. Um, I don't have the eight players here, but he's the eighth active player um, to hit thousand points. So okay, good on him. Yeah, that's good. He's quietly been racking them up in LA these past couple dud years fantasy mm. monster at least he's always on the ice right 
Yeah. He's he's a monster. Like he's he's a horse. It's he's one of those guys like Barkov who just he plays everywhere all times critical critical times, takes face off, shut down, plays other teams best lines. He might not get 50 goals. He might not get 100 points, but you know, he as a hockey player, he's he's really really good. Yep. I think anyways. But um yeah, uh when it comes to the next topic, uh, I don't know where you want to start necessarily. There's a few kind of angles. The the one I guess I had to yeah. start was oh. just with Tom Wilson. Um, oh, the scene. man, Tommy boy. What have you gotten yourself into? Um, it's such uh, – I don't know what angle to take it. I just think there's so much going on here. There's all like – so much build up to it as well that created and it just like built up to this moment and Tommy was probably the proximate cause of this situation. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I mean I've tried to break the play down a little bit. Like I haven't overanalyzed it per se, but the part where Bukshnevich was down on the ground with his hands kind of to the side and had zero capability of protecting himself. I didn't like that punch. Now, yes, it hit the back of his shoulder. Yes, it did, turned out fine. But it could have, it, it was very reckless, in my opinion, to have thrown the punch. It's one thing to push the guy and stand up above him or whatever, but to actually like try to push his face or head or hit his head towards the ice or hit it with your hand, I didn't like it. I found, I, I found from watching it that I felt like Tom Wilson was 100% in control in the way, like, he wasn't like out of control like a dog like just he yep, he fair. had control to his movements and including that punch i think i don't know it, yeah. it's it's i i think everyone wants the suspension that because the repeat offender thing so i think any other hockey player like a defenseman just someone finishing a play and this is that show that kind of control i think gets what he got gets yeah, I didn't think it was necessarily like egregious. Like all these people who were saying he needed a lifetime ban and whatever. Like I get the point of you tell a guy so many times and he continues to get involved with these things. But at the same time, you have to put yourself in his shoes that like if if you're the big dog, people are going to challenge the big dog from time to time. Yeah. The reason why he's the big dog is he stays the big dog. So that's the reason why Tom Wilson is Tom Wilson is there's no bigger dog. He is the big dog. Yeah. But... Like I said, I didn't like the punch, and the ragdoll thing to me, I'm torn between it because part of me is like, well, you jumped on the guy's back like you're a freaking cowboy. Like, it, Wait, what, what part are you talking about? When Panarin came and jumped on Wilson's back and Wilson turned and threw him to the ice, I, I didn't love it just because, like, if you grab – if a bigger, strong guy grabs somebody off his shoulder and just hucks him – into the net, into another guy and breaks their leg or into the ref and breaks their leg. Like there's certain issues with that off the ice. So like, I don't think that you can allow a precedent of wrestling type moves. Like I understand you can't really put them down politely. And that's why I'm so torn. Cause like, if you're going to suspend a guy, you have to also say, this is what you should have done. You can't just say, like, whatever, right? So, like, yeah. I don't know what to say he should have done. But I also don't like, really, the precedent it sets to allow bigger guys in a league that's trying to let smaller and smaller guys be their own and feel safe. In the same week that they paid out millions of damages for injuries, mostly head injuries, but injuries, like, to me, it seemed like it was almost tone deaf of you're paying out all these millions, you're claiming to be a safe league, you're claiming that small guys are protected and you're claiming that the PA will protect you. Well, the PA didn't protect Panarin or the other, as the Rangers felt they should. Yeah. So in my opinion, not sticking up for the Rangers was just as much sticking up for Wilson. And that's where I have a problem with it. From the, like the, the PA not only sticking up for Wilson, you mean? Yeah, the PA is supposed to st- stand up for every and all its players as one. No one individually. So how, how if you have a team of players, a roster of even the guys who played last night of whatever it is, 21 guys that are upset about how they were treated versus Wilson, like yeah. you, mm-hmm. you, you, instead of protecting your league's 
image, your leagues, what it wants to be and what it wants to stay away from, it basically said, but if you're the big guy and somebody pisses you off, you can take it into your own hands. Hmm. So like, what happens if somebody's being stupid and Chara grabs a guy and he punches him in the face, breaks his jaw, gives a concussion, hits him in the temple, kills him maybe? Like, what's it going to take? To get rid of that. Before we actually take this seriously. Like, I'm not trying to be all, like, end of the world thing here on this, whatever, but, like, we want a skilled game. We don't want this shit. We don't want people not to feel safe while playing the game. And I thought that they've struck out when they got up to bat to, to do something about it. Um, notice how I haven't, even ta- I haven't even talked about Wilson. Like, I, I, I just think that it was almost like, Wilson, you're going to take, like, three games. Shut up. Just sit out the rest of the playoffs. This will satisfy the entire Rangers. It would have prevented all this other stuff that's happened with the Rangers. And <laughs> yeah, let's get into everyone's that. just saying is all is any is any publicity good publicity? That's what they've been talking about, and I don't know if it is. I don't know. It's definitely gonna. It's it's interesting because New York is kind of that team that they're on Broadway. They got they put on the show like that's how, what they're supposed to be, right? They bring eyes to them and they're now involved in this very intense <laughs> thing that one happened <laughs> they, they they send out the statement after was it after they got fined or before? no they they sent out a statement like basically Bush get rid of tom Peros. yeah get rid of tom wilson get rid of Peros. yeah like fit, yeah like what's going on here and then they get fined quarter million dollars yeah by the league and then Sure enough, was it the same day or the next day they they fire the GM and the president and GM? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who the president John Davidson left the Rangers and went to Columbus, and the Rangers went through this whole process of trading and signing and all this other stuff with Columbus to get Davidson back because they felt they wronged him. They brought him back in two years ago, and then they do this to him. Like it's just like, what are you doing? Like that. Yeah, this is no. the type of stuff. Yeah, there's definitely that ruins a bigger stuff. story here, isn't there? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like I always talk about how I try and read between the lines, and there's a lot to read between these lines here. Like, there's no way that the Rangers. The way I read it was the NHL basically said, "Did you approve this statement? Did you sign off on them saying this?" And the, then the owner or whatever probably said either yes or no or maybe whatever, whatever, whatever. Probably came down to the NHL saying, great, well, we can either do something about it or you can do something about it. And you don't want us to do something about it. What do you think the the NHL would have done if they didn't get fired? I figured, like, just whoever made the statement and published it without getting it signed off on, that person would be gone unless those two signed off on the statement. See, apparently James Dolan, who is the owner, signed off on it, but he signed off on it under the understanding it wasn't going to be as harsh or as abrasive. Mm. Which leads me to question, if you're the owner and you're going to sign off on something, don't you want to read it first? Wouldn't you have read it first? <laughs> yeah, that's that's basically just, where yeah, my sure, logic's going. Sign, yep. Like, <laughs> don't have time to you read. either just said, sure, yeah, sure, whatever, or you read it and you thought it was fine and then... Afterwards, you so change I don't mind. know if you know the story for this because I don't know the story, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Apparently, this was the biggest fine since San Jose got fined for calling out the same kind of situation. For they got fined a hundred thousand. Okay. I don't know what they did though. Do you know? I don't recall. Okay. I want to say it was that playoff series. Remember, there was the hand pass in Game Six or Seven. It should have yeah. been. Yeah. yeah, there was supposed to be a whistle, and they didn't call it. It led it to a goal, and they didn't reverse it. And then San Jose lost because of it. I'm yeah. I'm ninety percent sure that, that that's that's okay. why because they felt they had their best team ever, and they felt they got screwed out of a chance to well, going. I don't remember if that was the West final or the final to get into the West final, the, the quarters or whatever. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was about. I'll have to look that up for a research corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a joke now. And, like, I was a big fan of what the Rangers were doing. And there's some uh, there's some talk going around that, like, trusted industry sources basically were, were told that, like, 
James Dolan, the owner, told them like the rebuild should be done by now. Like shouldn't take three years for a rebuild. Where other owners are like the rebuild is done. What are you talking you been about? Watching? Is, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is apparently James Dolan already told them that I'm going to fire you at the end of the season. Hmm. So then he eventually just said, well, if I'm going to fire you at the end of the season and all this stuff's happening, why don't I just fire you now? Yeah. Which if that's true, that's showing what kind of involvement James Dolan is getting. And he wasn't involved before. Why? Like, he's not a hockey guy. He's not like he's screwed the Knicks around for years. And they've been irrelevant. Rich, they've been bottom right? five for These years. Rich guys that just like own a team and don't know what they're and want to play like their own. They need control. They need control. Yeah, it's something that they would be best off Vancouver. not to have control on. Yeah. True. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with that. I think that I mean Bushnevich, I said I was fifty fifty on. I figured he might get a game um for that cross check, which he can't cross check anybody, but again, he kind of had it. Uh, Mantha kind of had it coming to him. I mean, he he was skating the other way. He stopped. Did they he say turned, anything he about it? Or is, it is he in the clear now? We think, right? Must be. Uh, well, he got he got a one game suspension. He did. Called it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, whatever. I get it. I would have understood if they also gave him a fine. Um, I think that I've decided personally, I'm no longer going to debate whether or not it should be something. I'm just going to be like, this is what I think it should be. And I'm probably wrong, <laughs> but like, I, I can't, like, it's really bothering me because like if the last like 15 things we've debated offline or online, I seem to be wrong on all of them about like whether or not it's a penalty or not a penalty or a suspension or not a suspension or goal or not a goal. Like literally I feel like I've been wrong on, all you're the on a, stuff you're on a downswing. You're on a bad run. It's okay. You'll turn around. You'll go on that hot yeah. streak. You'll look like you know what you're talking <laughs> about again for a few years, and then you'll be back to cruising. I still feel confident about this, the actual like game itself, but in terms of penalties and enforcing yeah, yeah. the game and stuff like that, I'm fucking clueless these days. I I don't even know. <laughs> but yeah, um, Rangers replaced them with uh, Chris Jury, first time GM. Um, James Dolan's going to be on the job, so that's going to be great for them. Um, and we'll see what they do. Um, I don't like what it sounds like because they, they, if they expect it to make the playoffs and next year it, the mandate is they make the playoffs, they could be forcing a hand with some sort of trade in the offseason where they're not in power to make well, that I trade. Think, right? I honestly believe they're, they're very capable of making the playoffs. Any other division, they'd be in the playoffs. How is that fair to the GM? You lost your job because you're you literally would have COVID. been the fourth seed in COVID's any getting other division. Everyone, man. No. Can't run it. Can't outrun yeah. it. You might as well succumb to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, we'll see dude. where that all goes. But I think uh might be the end of the Rangers talk uh in this kind of situation until the off season. So Yeah. What are you gonna say? I was just gonna say, ready to move on to some three stars of the week action. Let's do the three stars of the week. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> All right, you. So I'll do mine first, okay. right? Because I did them first this week, I think. Yeah, yeah, I populated them first. Feels like I did that yesterday. <laughs> um, yeah, this is actually the second last week of three stars, um, unless we continue it through the playoffs. But I think we're probably gonna break down matchup by matchup, so it probably won't be league wide kind of breakdown, right? So yeah, it's probably last week of three, second last week of three stars. But that being said, a um, bit of a goalie flare this week uh, between the two oh, of surprise. us, half of the stars this week. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Um, third star for me, Andre Vasilevsky. Uh, I had to give him, you know, one of the final sh- shout outs on the season. Uh, two and all of his last two starts, two goals on 45 shots. Um, one of those, op- those opponents was Dallas. Uh, I don't remember the other one off the top of my head. Uh, I want to say maybe Columbus or something. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, doing he's, he's he's having a quiet but stellar quiet season. Um, As we'll he see. always does. I think he's going to be a favorite. I think he's going to be a favorite for the um, Vesna. So we'll see where that goes. Second star, uh, another one of my boys, uh, Leon Drysidel. I just realized all three of my stars are guys I own in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> no uh, bias Leon Dreisaitl, whatsoever. Second star. <laughs> <laughs> right? No bias. None whatsoever. Uh, Leon Dreis had two goals, six assists, eight points in his last three games, or in the last seven days anyways. Uh, him and McDavid just continued to, to tear up the league. Um, yep. 
well, okay, what else can you say? <laughs> it's dominant. <laughs> uh, and then my first star is uh, Tuka Rask. 3-0 in his last three games, three goals against in those three starts. Um, again, he's he's lighting it up in perfect timing yeah, just right when time. my season ended and I needed him. He, he, oh, he's I, been great ever since. So, Right when Boston needs him, though. You just got to get in tune True. with the way Boston times it and realize. Fuck Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Boston yeah. is out enough. They don't need this, too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. I'll go with my three here. Semyon Varlamov gets my third star of the week. He had three starts. Two of them were shutouts. Um, however, the Islanders have dropped off a little bit, and they're in fourth. So that's why I kind of drop him down to third in that scenario. Nick Suzuki gets my second star. Eight points in the past four games as well. Montreal's basically all but clinched a playoff spot at this point. Uh, Flames dropping out a bit of it by now. And... Yeah, and then that brings me to, I just realized, back-to-back weeks, first star from me, Sebastian Ajo. He's now had 16 points in the past eight games. Uh, Carolina's still leading the division, probably likely going to win the division now. Uh, they're, in the, they're leading the league. Leading the league, there Carolina's it is. Carolina's first in the league. There it is. And he's, uh, so Ajo, I think, is on a, at least an eight-game point streak as well with Many multiple point correct, games yeah. in there, and just overall crushing. Took him, and a they're not bit. even fully healthy yet. Yeah, and it took him a little bit. He had a slow start to the season for sure. Uh, he's turned it on where it mattered, and right in time for playoffs. Rob Brennamore's got them playing good. He's got him playing good. A lot of other guys. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be cool to see what how that all these playoff matchups are starting to look real, real exciting. Mm hmm. Three stars. I guess stars last, brings us to our last thing here with the uh, the playoff races that you're just kind of hinting towards. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's it's pretty much all but set, I guess, at this point, other than Nashville, Dallas. But even that one's kind of looking like it's set now, right? It's getting it's a lot right more likely. Um. For sure, we we we'll see a couple of like the first first places up f for grabs uh specifically with the washington pittsburgh boston like really mm -hmm. they're all boston's a little mm -hmm. bit out of it but that could change the matchups and that one very likely going to see colorado play minnesota in the first round which th overall their records are like basically the same which is will probably mm -hmm. make for a very good tough series for colorado and didn't minnesota pump colorado the other night wasn't it like eight minnesota or something? pumped colorado a couple times um yeah definitely in fantasy playoffs when i was running grubauer they pumped them for like eight so yeah that was about a month ago and since then they've also put up five or six in a couple games mm -hmm. i think that they're one of those teams now we got to actually consider them to be legit i mean i think that they have had their points stuffed a little bit uh, getting to play some of those other teams but when they actually get to play the better teams they they show up so yeah, we'll see where that goes. And they're but, like goal um, differentials right up there with other teams in the playoffs, so they definitely belong. Yeah. That's for sure. And they're not a team that just relies on offense. They're a team that plays kind of goalie out. So they're one of those teams that you never know. Like, look at look at the back in the day, they used to go on these random runs when everything was working right, right? So, yeah. so when see. we get, we'll get to the North Division here, Toronto is very likely going to play. Uh, Montreal, maybe they, they have a shot at Winnipeg. I don't know what those two team schedules are like down the stretch. Do you have any idea? Winnipeg, yeah, I looked at them the other day. I don't remember them to like the exact, um, but I do recall that Winnipeg's schedule was much easier. Okay. Uh, I want to say Montreal plays Toronto. We're gonna say Edmonton, Edmonton, Winnipeg. Yeah, I thought. And I... Winnipeg, I says I want to say plays Vancouver, Vancouver, Calgary, Montreal, maybe. Maybe like easier yeah. guys, they, they, easier guys. They, they don't play each other though, do they? I don't know. Once I think they play once before Winnipeg. Winnipeg plays. Yeah, Toronto so on the last I guess that that, that division season. as a whole isn't really decided. I think we know Edmonton's going to be second, Toronto's going to be first, uh, but the matchups can still switch technically. I think if Winnipeg happens to fall under Montreal, I think it's on purpose. Now, I don't believe anyone would purposely tank, 
but I'm starting to feel just about all the comments that are coming from the Winnipeg side, just about how much Maurice talks about how the Leafs are dirty and how the Leafs hurt a couple of guys. They won't be back until the first round. Like I think Winnipeg wants Toronto in the first round. Like I think Winnipeg believes that even though they haven't beat them in the regular season, I feel like in a playoff matchup, they think they can actually beat them up and then beat them. Hmm. And I think that they would. And I think that Winnipeg <laughs> wants them so bad. And I don't think that they want to have to try and go through another team before they get them. I think they want the Leafs. Wow. I think they're after them. <laughs> so you're worried. Um, I'm not worried, but if, if Winnipeg it. does do that and they continue to struggle, I'm less worried because you, yeah, you can't lose a bunch of games and then turn the switch on. That's not how it works, right? Yeah. Um, but that being said, you get Adam Lowry back, who is like your penalty killing kind of guy. Uh, you get Ehlers back, who hasn't been playing lately. You get Dubois kind of playing his normal game because he gets his wingers back. Like they're not yeah. a team. Like I think they're a better team than they're showing. Yeah. And if that switch does happen to turn, they're not a team I actually want to play. So Makes I'd rather Edmonton and Winnipeg figure it out, and whoever turns that switch on in that series, then I'd rather deal with that after yeah, we hopefully totally deal agreed. with Montreal. Yeah. Hopefully. Agreed. That's the best hopefully. path for sure. All right, anything else you want to talk about yeah. on these standing races? No, you're good to go? No, I think I'm going to go watch the Leaf game. <laughs> yep, I'm going to go. They're up three or four nothing now. Okay, are they? They were up at least three nothing. I cool. haven't seen the score in a little bit, but. All right, sounds good. Talk to you. Watch some. Oh, yeah, Jay's, Jay's already, already played, won. Right? They already won, yeah. Celebration. Sick. All right, awesome. have a good one. Bye. All right, cool, man.